Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. So this one is a straightforward get started with Jenkins with Docker. So we're basically just going to create a new Jenkins container in Docker. We're going to start it, go through the basic installation steps, and then I'll just take you through the basics of creating a project. So we won't actually create a project in this tutorial, but I'll just show you where you can start building projects um, and the different types of projects you might create. And then just go through the managing of plugins and then at the end start and stop the instance so you're familiar with doing that. So that'll take us and lead us into the next tutorial when we actually start utilizing Jenkins. If you were to head over to Docker Hub and look for Jenkins, you'll see that Jenkins is managed by the Jenkins team. And currently there's two versions that we can utilize, the LTS and the latest weekly. So I would imagine the LTS is the long-term support version. And we've got obviously the bleed ned version here, the lately or the latest weekly update. Now we are going to go ahead and use and install this in Docker or create a container in Docker for our Jenkins application. Of course, you don't need to do that. You can head across to the Jenkins website, jenkins.io, go ahead to the downloads and follow the installation guides for your specific operating system. So the benefit of having a container, it just saves me having to install it onto my operating system and so on. If you're not too familiar with utilizing Docker, then please head back to the Docker series where I just take you through how to get Docker started and just go and take you through some of the basics. So by all means do that, but literally if you want to follow this tutorial, you just need to actually download Docker. Now I'm using Windows um, here. So I've just got the, the Docker dashboard here up so you can see that it's installed, but we'll be utilizing the CLI. So it should be the same whether you're using Mac or Windows. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, before we start installing, let's just go ahead to the documentation. I'll just show you that. Though this is a pretty handy documentation. You can definitely read through all this. That's gonna give you a little bit more guidance. We are just going for a basic install here. We just go through some of the basic steps and look at the interface and go through some of the different areas of the interface just to become a little bit familiar with Jenkins. And then we kind of leave it there. And then in the next tutorial, we'll take this forward even more. So let's get started. First of all, obviously we're gonna be typing in Docker and then run. So we want to get a container started. So we're going to need to actually be able to access Jenkins. So Jenkins will be running on a, on a server. So we're going to need to access that server in a way through a port. Now we can't use port 80, that's just the default internet port. So by default, Jenkins is going to be utilizing the port 8080. Now what we need to do is map our computer to that container port or map a port from our computer to the container port that's running Jenkins. So this is where we define the ports. Now, like I said, it's running on 8080. So I'm going to access from my computer, my browser, 8080 port, and that's going to be mapped across then to the container that's running Jenkins. So I map that across. So next up, we can define another set of ports. So Jenkins runs on the Tomcat server, which uses port 8080 by default. This is why we set this bind here. So we can also set an additional bind to attach to a slave server. So that uses port 50,000. Again, that's basically just used to communicate between the master and slaves. Now that's something that we haven't spoken about before. We don't need to really go in, in, in any detail here, but we can just go ahead and just set that up in case we will do that at a later point. So let's uh, make sure I've got enough zeros there. So let's just map that across. Okay, so next up, we want a command to create a volume. So if you're not too sure what a volume is, I've created a tutorial on what volumes are. So please go ahead and maybe watch that first and then come back. So here, what we want to do is install Jenkins. Okay, we know that. We also know from the previous tutorial that we're going to be installing plugins. So there's gonna to need to be a, a, a need for persistent data. We're going to need to be actually able to store data so that when we turn off the Jenkins container, when we bring it back up again, the data persists. So we need to do that through creating a volume. 
so if we're just following the Jenkins guide, uh, the installation guide, we're going to set up a, a named volume here. So Jenkins um, home, and then we're going to then bind that to a directory within our container. So var and then Jenkins underscore home. So that's going to bind the data within our container to our local machine. So like I said, once we turn off Jenkins and turn back on again, the, the data is going to persist through the use of a Docker volume. Okay, so now we need to just basically grab a copy of Jenkins. I did say earlier we we're going to be utilizing the LTS. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, now we can run. Okay, so chatting to you and trying to do it at the same time. This is a new skill. Uh, so I forgot to add the V there. So that just uh, defines the volume that I've defined afterwards. So V for volume. Uh, let's go ahead and run that. So you can see that, first of all, it said unable to find the image locally. So I don't actually have this image. So what's happening now is it's just downloading from the Docker Hub the image that I'm going to need. So then I'm going to go ahead and build this image, turn it on automatically, and we should have a running version of Jenkins. So once everything's started, you'll notice here it says, please use the following password to proceed to installation. So just go ahead and make a record of this password. Uh, on Windows, I'm just going to copy that. Okay, so I'd imagine now Docker has started, so we can run a Docker PS to see what's going on. And you can see here we have a new image. Uh, of course, we could just go to, if you have this installed, the dashboard here, and you can see that it's in use. If I go to my um, container apps here, you can see that we've created this new Jenkins container. Um, we can utilize some of these if you wanted to, or if you weren't too familiar with utilizing the command prompt in Docker, you could utilize some of these different options here to stop and to go into the CLI and so on. Notice before we set up the ports, we bind some of the ports at 8080 and the 50,000. So let's now go back into our browser and let's type in localhost. And this time it's 8080. That's the port that we bound. And there we go. So now we've made that connection from our machine to the container. And we're now inside of the container, essentially, or accessing the service inside of the container. Now it's asking us for an admin password. So if you remember, the password was given to us um, previously um, in the command prompt. I copied it. So let's go ahead and paste it right here and press continue. There we go. So the initial setup here, you can see that we're being asked to install, we've got a choice here to install the suggested plugins or select plugins to install. So we're just gonna go ahead this time, install the suggested plugins. And let's take a look at what it's installing. So you can see here, we've got some really popular plugins um, that you might be familiar with. If I can just, I don't seem to be able to get hold of that. Oh, I can. We've got another scroll here. So you can see that there are some add-ons that are going to be added, essentially, um, which I can then utilize for my pipeline. So let's just go ahead and wait for that. So now we can go ahead and create our first admin user. So I've pre-filled this in. And once you've done that, press save and continue. And press OK. So we've got the instance configuration here. So we can just continue utilizing this for now press save and finish, and then start using Jenkins. So if you haven't used Jenkins before, congratulations on installing and welcome to Jenkins. So there's a few things that we can just take a look at to begin with. So what you're probably interested in to begin with is how do you actually build a Jenkins project? Well, head over to new item. You'll be presented with three items here, essentially. We've got freestyle project, pipeline, and multi-configuration project. So what we're looking at here really is flexibility and scalability. So if you're just running a really small project where you're just needing maybe um, run and test a project, we could utilize a freestyle project. 
So a freestyle project does provide a lot of different flexibilities. We can definitely scale this up potentially. That's essentially what this is going to provide. If it's a simple project, we need just maybe some, like I said, single uh, task run and test. We can reuse this. So once we get uh, more into a pipeline, as I was explaining in the previous tutorial, this is where we're going to have multiple, like it says, long running, running activities with multiple um, build agents, potentially multiple workflows, or sorry, a, a lengthy workflow, not multiple workflows. So a complex environment. So here we're going to select a pipeline. From this, we could develop a whole delivery life cycle from uh, testing, building, and deploying. This last option here, multi-configuration project. Well, for example, if, you've, you, if you're running multiple branches, then this is what you'll be utilizing. Uh, so here is again, like a, a pipeline, um, but for multiple configurations. So to summarize then, you've got simple projects, maybe just a run and test. You've got a pipeline where you can orchestrate your, your whole delivery cycle, uh, maybe on a, a single branch. And then here, if you're running multiple branches um, of your software, so multiple instances of your software, if you don't understand the concept of um, branches, um, this is where you would have a multiple configuration setup, depending on what type of branch and be able to configure a pipeline on different branches of your software. So if we go back into the main admin area, the second area of interest, and I've kind of zoomed out a little bit so you can see it, how you're probably looking at it too, is the manage Jenkins. So from here, you can see that, for example, um, there's a, a range of different administration tools. And one of maybe the main areas for now is the fact that as I've suggested, this is um, working with plugins. So we're going to be actually adding new features to this if we're building a, a long pipeline. So this is where we can manage all of our plugins. So take, for example, you wanted to find a new plugin, just go to available, go to the search and just type in what you're searching for. So Git, that's going to produce a list of items. So for example, if I wanted the GitLab installed, I could just go ahead and select that. And then I can then go and install without restart, or I can download now and install after restart. So that'd be an easy way of kind of creating um, or downloading any other plugins. So you can see here that when we initiated Jenkins, we did indeed actually install some, and you can see the ones that are currently available. And it, it, this is fairly intuitive, right? So uninstall here to uninstall and so on. So let's just finish off by showing you the persistent storage, the volume that we created. So this is where it differentiates between, depending on what operating system you're using. And Windows here, I'm using PowerShell. So this is how I can stop, for example, a container. So I can run something like this, for example. So this is why I'm just going to go into the admin here and just do it this way, assuming that you may already have this installed. So we can go over to the containers. You can see I've just stopped that. So I can delete that. So that was the container. Now remember that the container is just a running image. So this is the image that we created earlier um, of Jenkins. So we could run it here, of course, um, but just let's go ahead and into the command prompt and just run it from there. So this time you'll notice that I define the ports again, and this time the bind, and at the end I put F66. So that just refers here to the image ID if you're not familiar with utilizing Docker and so on. So that's just the first three characters. Now what it does is I don't have to type in all of this. I could do, of course, but of course it's, a, it's unique. So obviously Docker has just determined that it's gonna run this one because this matches the first three characters. So let's just go ahead and run that. And that's going to boot up the, the container. So you can see that the container comes online and it's ready to go again. So let's go back in. Uh, and just run this again. So we're welcomed. Now we have to log in. So mine is just admin and admin. That's what I initially set up when I installed Jenkins. So I sign in. That should sign me in. Of course, it's persistent storage. So it should um, store the username and password that I've set up. And there we go. We're back in.
So next up in the next tutorial, we'll go through some of the different steps you'll need to take to actually start building a, a pipeline or a project. And there we have it. So that was getting started with Jenkins with Docker. Now, there are some other ways, of course, we can utilize Jenkins within Docker. Um, we've just gone ahead utilizing the documentation from Jenkins and just giving you some uh, basic tips and guide and an overview on how to actually just get Jenkins started in Docker. Now, as we go through this tutorial series, we will change the installation process slightly. Um, but I'll take you through that. Once we start utilizing Docker Compose, for example, we we'll definitely utilize maybe just a slightly different process for this. But the point here is that we have actually now got started with Jenkins. You've got the general overview. If you weren't too familiar with uh, the Docker system, we now know how to kind of start and stop a, an instance. Um, you've become a little bit more familiar with the installation process with Jenkins. I've taken you over to the Jenkins readme file on GitHub. So definitely have a little read through of that. So it's definitely pointing you in the right directions. We've created a new Jenkins container. We've created or showed you how to create projects and also then managing plugins.